Priest is a street hustler. His hustle is cocaine. To the untrained eye, you can't tell if he's a hustler with a coke problem or a junkie that hustles. Let me tell you, this cat does a lot of blow. I mean a lot. We meet him the morning after a night of wrestling with a bunny. He heads out the door, zipping up his pants in the middle of the street, climbs into a fly Cadillac Eldorado, fur interior, spoked, floating on hydraulics. It's his world and we're just lucky enough to live in it. Also living in his world are a couple of junkies who mug him. Priest recovers and engages in a foot chase through the neighborhood, knocking over garbage cans, hurling fences, climbing fire escapes, and finally catching and kicking the robber into a deep sleep. By the way, he did all of this while wearing platform shoes. Priest meets up with his workers to run the numbers from last night. Hold up, before we get started, time for another hit. I think he lost his half from all that running through the neighborhood. So Priest receives word that the Knights collection is kind of light on one end. It's mainly because of his worker fat Freddy and his relationship problems. This ain't the first time that Freddy has messed up Priest's earnings forecast. Priest threatens to put Freddy's old lady on the track to balance his books. He gives Freddy a gun and orders him to get his money by hook or crook. Next, Priest meets up with his business partner Eddie, who's on the winning side of a dice game. When Priest summons Eddie for a chat, Eddie tries to cut the game short short with a pocket full of the loser's money. Well, this causes some friction and one loser lets his emotions get the best of him. He gets lippy with Priest. Don't know if you can see it from the image, but Priest slapped the shit out of him. That cat lost his money, his teeth, and his dignity in one afternoon. Back at Eddie's crib, Priest catches him up on the money problems caused by Fat Freddy. Oh wait, hold on, gotta take another hit. Having to deliver that pimp slap must have killed his high. So anyway, Priest breaks the news to Eddie that he wants to get out of the dope game. He's tired of balling. Eddie questions his partner's sanity because to Eddie, life as it is, is about as good as it'll ever get. But Priest persists. He wants to get out of the business on his own terms before the business begins to make irreversible demands on him. His plan is to make one last push, one last deal that will set him up for life after hustling. He's sitting on 300K. He plans on flipping that into 100 million by purchasing 30 keys and pushing it out over several months. Eddie is reluctant, and whether he's in or out, profit is profit. The partners visit Priest's mentor, Scatter. Scatter was the man before Priest was the man. He runs a restaurant bar that must be doing okay because, hey, that's Curtis Mayfield. They join Scatter in the back to discuss Priest's plan. Now you probably think Priest is about to take another hit, but you'd be wrong. He gives Scatter a hit, and then he takes a hit for himself. So Priest gives Scatter the rundown, but Scatter is adamant that he's retired. Priest continues to press him. They reminisce about the good old days, and Priest even reminds Scatter that he was the one who passed the game down to him. Scatter finally agrees to give Priest access to his old connections who are capable of delivering that amount of product. Meanwhile, Fat Freddy is out in them streets making that money that he owes Priest. Fun fact, back in the day, brothers on a budget used pantyhose to conceal their identity when doing dirt. With money in hand, Freddy and his old lady joined Priest to settle the score. He pays his debts, and everything is everything. Priest then goes over the details of his arrangement with Scatter and his connections. For Priest, it's daytime with the bunny, nighttime with the honey. He relaxes with Georgia, his main squeeze. She's on a walk on water mission of convincing a successful hustler to become a square cat. Yeah. Good luck with that one, sister. Next, we see Fat Freddy getting arrested cause he's beat a dude for hollering at his old lady. He's taken down to the precinct and gets squeezed by the cops for information about priests. Who's priests working for? How big is his crew? How much product does he move? Through the motivational technique of Jack smacking Freddy across the head, the cops managed to get him to rat out Priest's operations, including his big score with Scatter. They arrest Freddy the rat and take him to his cage, but he manages to break free and escape on foot only to get hit by an El Camino, a solid vehicle, all steel, no plastic, no crumple zones, no gill. He dead. Meanwhile, Priest is out with Georgia, giving her the news that he's found a lane out of the game. Just one last deal, and he's free. She tries to convince him that he could just get out of the game now and she'd still be down. But he wasn't born yesterday. If that cat was broke, she'd be out within the hour. Fast forward, Priest and Eddie have moved 15 of the 30 keys. 
One night while leaving Scatter's place, they get stopped by the cops, the same ones that busted Freddy. Instead of getting jammed up, the cop tells them that they already know about the operation. He gives Priest and Eddie an offer that they can't refuse, a partnership. Continue to push product in larger quantities in exchange for protection from the law. This opportunity is Christmas come early for Eddie, but Priest reminds him that the plan was to get out of the game. Eddie's like, man, fuck all of that. We're about to be rich. He reminds Priest of their limited options if they walk away from the game. Business continues and Priest is basically trapped. He wants to disappear, but the spotlight only grows brighter. He's got brothers in the neighborhood rolling up on him talking about giving back to the cause because his product is destroying the community. Priest hints that he's down for the cause, but his methods are a little too heavy for the revolutionaries. Priest is dealing with an existential crisis. He got the bunny, Eddie and the cops pulling the one way, and he's got his conscience and his honey pulling him in the other. While chilling with the bunny, his little street buddy Scatter pops up. Scatter is about to go on the run. He asks Priest to let him hold a little something so that he can relocate. With Priest now the head runner, Scatter has become expendable. Plus he has too much damaging information on his suppliers. Scatter clues Priest into something that he already knows. One day, he's going to be in the same predicament that Scatter's in now. The game has no loyalty. Scatter has kept receipts on the operation. He gives Priest all the information that he has on the cats behind the whole operation. Later, the crooked cops snatch Scatter off the streets. They drive him to a remote location and inject him with a huge dose of smack. Scatter ODs. Up on getting the news about Scatter's death, Priest goes on the offensive. He meets up with some cats in a diner and he hands him the same papers that Scatter gave him. In addition, he gives them an envelope of cash. Now, I don't want to stereotype, but I suspect these cats were mobsters. Next stop, Priest goes to see Eddie. Eddie goes in on the news about Scatter ODing, but Priest corrects him that Scatter was killed. Tomato, tomato. Eddie still ain't trying to step away from all that easy money. Priest makes Eddie empty out his safe. And just like that, the partnership is over, and Priest exits with a briefcase full of cash. As soon as the door shuts, Eddie wastes no time calling his crooked partners. They put out a call on Priest. Priest makes his way down on the elevator, but stops at midway. He's joined by a woman carrying a big shopping bag. It's Georgia. The two begin to swap the contents of their containers, with Priest transferring the money to her. When Priest hits the streets, he's quickly apprehended by the cops. As he's being detained, he watches Georgia getting away with the money. Cops drive Priest to a dock. It's a meetup with the man behind the man behind the man, the same guy that Scatter spoke of, Reardon, the deputy commissioner. Reardon begins to tell Priest how disappointed he is. Wait, hold up. Time for another hit. Okay, go on. Reardon tells Priest that whether he likes it or not, he's gonna keep working them streets for him. Priest says some words that you can't use anymore in these days that were okay in the 70s, and then a fight breaks out. Pretty much a basic 70s fight. Some Batman and Robin moves here and there, some karate moves, some pimp slapping, cats getting dumped in the trash cans. Reardon pulls that action stopper out and Priest dares him to shoot. Priest tells Reardon that he's got the full 411 on who he is, where he is, and what he is. He lets Reardon know that he made a deal with some cats that will clip him and his family if anything ever happens to him. Reardon thinks that Priest ain't got no damn money to pay anyone for a hit since they have his briefcase. But they soon find out that that briefcase is empty, so Priest has the money for a hit somewhere. Priest reminds Reardon that his contractors are quite experienced. And then Priest walks away, gets in his car, and just drives off. Time for another hit. Fuck y'all. <laughs>